Welcome as we start understanding the easiest of our medications, the ones that don't get absorbed and work by direct actions or by chemical reaction rather than on cellular receptors or enzymes the way most of our medications work. As we talk about these first medications though, I want you to keep in mind that most of our medications are much more complicated. We're learning these simple ones first so that you develop the habit of understanding medications in the easiest way. One of the first things you're going to try to find out about any medication is what it treats. Or in other words, we would say what it is indicated for. And antacids help relieve heartburn. Heartburn is the simple term for gastroesophageal reflux. And when that gastroesophageal reflux becomes a chronic disorder, or in other words, a long-standing disorder, an ongoing problem, when it becomes a chronic disorder, it's called gastroesophageal reflux disease. And that's abbreviated as GORD or GERD, depending on how you spell esophagus. And importantly, the antacids are not indicated in gastroesophageal reflux disease for reasons that we'll explain as we go along. So let's go back to the normal anatomy and physiology and then to the pathophysiology, or in other words, the disordered physiology that occurs in gastroesophageal reflux disease so that we can really understand the safety concerns of antacids and understand when the antacids are best used. If we could go down to the stomach and zoom into the lining of the stomach, we'd find that the stomach wall has gastric pits, and those gastric pits have different cells. One of the types of cells that we'd find in the gastric pits is called a parietal cell. And those parietal cells secrete various products, and in some cases, into the stomach itself. The important thing that they secrete with respect to the antacids is the acid. The parietal cell pumps out protons directly into the stomach, and we call those protons hydrogen ions. The actual definition of an acid is a substance that donates or gives up a hydrogen ion. So you know that the hydrogen ion that the parietal cell secretes is acidic. The hydrogen ions, the H plus ions, combine with the chloride anion in the gut to form hydrochloric acid. And as a really broad overview, antacids are medications that simply neutralize the acid in the stomach. They allow this hydrogen ion to be made into water. We'll talk a little more about the mechanisms by which this happens in a minute, but for right now we just need to get a better idea of what causes the reflux. Esophageal reflux itself and gastroesophageal reflux disease can be caused by a number of things. At the bottom of the esophagus, just as it joins onto the stomach, there's a sphincter there that's called an esophageal sphincter. And that sphincter is just a muscular ring that normally prevents the acid from being splashed up into the esophagus. It has some tone, or in other words, a continuous passive contraction of the muscles, and that keeps the sphincter closed. In other words, the muscles right here are normally a bit contracted, and that acts like a gate to prevent acid splashing up. So factors that decrease the tone of those muscles will relax the sphincter and predispose people to reflux. Those factors include a number of drugs, for instance, alcohol, muscle relaxants, cigarette smoke, and opioids, all of those can decrease the tone of the lower esophageal sphincter, and that predisposes the person to having reflux. In some cases, simply removing the drug can help relieve the reflux without medication and prevent the problem from progressing to gastroesophageal reflux disease. 
Another thing that predisposes a person to gastroesophageal reflux disease is a very full stomach. So people who binge eat or who have what's termed central obesity, that type of obesity that has most of the extra weight around the abdominal area, those people will be predisposed to getting gastroesophageal reflux disease. Either of those conditions push the contents of the stomach towards the top portion of the stomach and that can result in a retrograde of the stomach contents even if there's a really strong esophageal sphincter. Finally, the most irreversible change that can predispose a person to gastroesophageal reflux disease is when the top portion of the stomach pushes through the diaphragm. And that's a very common condition called a hiatal hernia. About 20% of people have that disorder. That condition is very different from the other factors that predispose a person to reflux. All of those other factors were able to be reversed or at least we were able to do something to decrease the impact. The hiatal hernia is not a condition that can be cured even with surgery. One of the most important safety issues about gourd comes from the fact that if a person had stomach acid splashing up onto the wall of the esophagus for 10 to 20 years or more, that could start changes in the esophageal cells. It could make the cells what we call dysplastic and that dysplasia can then lead to cancer, esophageal cancer. So right now, I'm going to leave you thinking about the major safety issue of gourd and antacid. Before you click on that next video, try to identify in your own words what you think the most important safety issue is around a person being able to self-prescribe antacids for their reflux. And we'll talk about that in the Applying Your Knowledge quiz, which is next up. We'll see you there.